Live from the MGM Grand Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at Splunk.com 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Splunk. Here are your hosts, Jeff Kelly and Jeff Frick. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is Jeff Frick. We are in the Cube at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're at Splunk.com, the fifth year of Splunk's annual uh, user conference, third year that the Cube has been here. We love coming to this show. We get to talk to a lot of customers, a lot of practitioners, 4,000 people walking around, learning about Splunk, uh, getting use cases from fellow practitioners. And uh, if you could see, if we turn the cameras around, you'd see the sessions must have just broken out. So I'm joined here in my next uh, with segment with my co-host, Jeff Kelly. Indeed, I'm also called Jeff. You've got the Jeff and Jeff Show here live at Splunk Conf 2014, and we're joined by Marie-Helene Lessor. Yep. I hope I did that justice with my French accent. I hope you like that, Jeff. I can That's tell you it's better than mine. <laughs> uh, Marie-Helene worked for the International Organization of Standardization. Yep, right. Um, you're a system manager there. Why don't you tell us a little bit about um, your organization? It might not be familiar to a lot of our audience, so tell us a little bit about um, what the organization does. Okay, so ISO, we are based in Geneva, Switzerland. We are 150 people working for this company, but the thing is, we are helping people to deliver standards. To, we give them the tools so that they will be able to work effectively on the standard. So we are like 100,000 people working on our system to get the standard delivered, and then we'll sell them. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking a little bit before we went on air, and this, is, this could be across any, any industry? Uh, yeah, any kind of subject, we will be able to work on that. So what are some examples, if you could maybe add, add those so we can kind of get a little bit of color around? Um, there is one standard for the cooking of pasta, to know when they are al dente, ah, okay. for example. This one is a funny one. Mm -hmm. We also have one which will be on quality of IT services, security of IT services. Mm -hmm. And one of the which is funny is the, the um, glass of wine. There is a standard for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you work with, I, I imagine you must have to work with um, participants in those industries who are maybe different companies, different players. To, I mean, that's the whole point of standardization is to standardize across the complete industry, right? Um, so maybe you do have a lot of, uh, how do you say this, dispute management? You've got uh, issues between participants about what the standard should be, that kind of thing. Do you help navigate those yeah, challenges? Yeah, exactly. That's what we are doing. When we write a norm, it has to be adopted with a consensus. Mm -hmm. So, and to get that, we have to work with people to help them to, to agree on something. Mm -hmm. So that's also part of our job. Yes, consensus is not always easy to get. Nope. Um, so what's your role specifically as a system manager? There? I'm working in the IT team mm -hmm. of ISO. I'm IT system manager over there, so I'm handling all the infrastructure from network to storage to servers, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. We are also the operational team, so when something broke, we have to fix it first level. And I'm also, inside the small team, the IT service manager. Mm -hmm. So I'm ensuring that the process are fully followed when we're doing stuff. I'm also working on the incident, problem management, mm -hmm. that kind of things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which leads me to my next question, and I can already kind of imagine how you might be using Splunk, but tell us a little bit about um, your use of Splunk and kind of how you guys came to, uh, to use that platform and those applications. We wanted to get a tool to have a unique interface to get all this information, to be able to log on a place and then be able to work from here. Mm -hmm. So we think of Splunk to consolidate all our logs to start for, mm -hmm. and then we end up putting some other things in it, like some metrics for our switches or for our storage. So now when something is happening, we can just log there see the um, application logs and move on a little bit to some deeper level if needed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so paint a picture for us kind of before and after. So uh, trying to do th those things with, you know, prior to using Splunk, I imagine was, was it a manual effort? We're yeah. using other types of tools. What kind of brought you? Is some, there must have been a pain point where you said we need to find another solution. What was that that kind of brought you to? The thing is, as we're working with people from other countries, sometimes things were happening during the night, and we're not aware of that, and we didn't have the tool to investigate it properly. Mm -hmm. So usually we just end up saying, hey, I'm sorry, I can't help you. We don't have the tool to help you to get the full knowledge of what happened. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, it really became a real issue with that because it became recurrent, so we have to work on it. 
And so we try to figure out a way to get those information. And then Splunk just popped up like that and we're like, okay, it's the right tool, we really need it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very fortuitous, I mean, I think Splunk has really um, come a long way in the, you know, the, the, it's fairly short existence. Um, kind of started as a point application and now as we're seeing at the show, Jeff, much more a platform play where they're addressing a lot of different use cases. And we've heard from a lot of their customers that we've had on the queue that they'll often start in one area around IT operations, IT um, operations management and analytics, and we'll move to another area, whether it's security or even something like marketing. Um, talk about that dynamic in your organization. Has Splunk kind of uh, spread throughout the, the company, or, or is that something you see potentially happening? As of now, we're still starting to use it, so we're still set up in things. Still early days? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to put, again, some, some other data, but still in the same field. But I think we're going to move on a little bit to get some business metrics and that kind of thing to help marketing and sales, maybe, if they mm -hmm. need it. So that will be the next discussion in the few months to come. Mm. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this show. What are, what are your uh, thoughts on the, kind of the crowd here? It's a pretty, pretty enthusiastic group. I'm, I'm guessing this is your first time yeah, at Dot .com. Yeah, it is. Um, just, yeah, what are your impressions? Oh, I, I really love it. It is really interesting and the use case of other companies are really helpful. Mm. because it gave us some idea of what we can do or what we should not do at all. <laughs> so it really helped us to, to build the Splunk that we will be using in maybe one year from now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's interesting, Jeff, that the community here plays really plays a role in ways that it doesn't at a lot of other software companies. Yeah, that people are passionate. So what are some of the most uh, innovative things that you've seen uh, within the peer set? Uh, I went just right now to something about DevOps a conference by DevOps, and that was really interesting because we're all speaking about DevOps, including us at ISO, but we don't really know what it is, so we have to work a little bit on that. And then there were a lot of sessions about Splunk on AWS and the cloud, and that's some big world that everybody is using, so we, we wanted to get some more information to know if that can be applied to us too, because we're a small company, but we have still some way to go, we're growing, our business is changing, okay. so we need to adapt. So do you use AWS now? Not yet. Do you have any type of cloud infrastructure in place now? No, no, we're all on premise. All on premise, okay, but you see potential there. Yeah, maybe that will move in the months to come. We're still trying to figure out. Yeah, and, and uh, so you, you haven't even explored it for like test dev or even just kind of get your toes wet? Yeah, just, but it was really a small test, so nothing really serious about that. Okay, and so you know, a lot of, lot of capabilities enabled here by Splunk. What are some of the things you're hoping that you can accomplish next that you weren't able to do before? What we want to do is having the view from the application to the, um, to the system. So we're trying to find a way to correlate those data all together. That's a hard work because we have some preparation work to do for that. So we're investing in that and in the same way with the business metric that will have to come, we'll have to feed some new data in Splunk. So we have to work on that also to know how we will be able to get those. What, what kinds of data? Uh, for example, the usage of our, of our website, how people are behaving, if everything is running fine for them, and what kind of node they are looking at, those kind of things. Okay, and then have you, are you guys uh, kind of omni-channel? Do you have, have you developed mobile apps and, and those types of things to support your customer base? No, we don't have mobile application yet. Maybe it will come, I don't know, but that's, we're thinking about it just right now. Okay. So, but. It is important for me to know what Splunk is able to do, so that now when a project will pop up about whichever subject it is, we'll be able to get it all ready from our side also. Okay, and how many people in your organization now are using Splunk? Is it still pretty small or is it starting it is, to spread? It is really small. Um, basically, we are like three in the infrastructure team that can use it, and then the developers start using it also to, read, to get access to their log. Okay. And um, in terms of you being able to sell the budget to get Splunk, how did you do that, and how did that how did that happen? Uh, we showed them the, how we were able to get some information, some statistic usage on the application. Okay. So that was one thing, and then we were able to to create some capacity planning on our storage, which were missing till Splunk. So and that just say, okay, well, we really need that. Let's go with this. Okay. And was it orders of magnitude easier to do than methods prior? 
it was much easier to, to compile and present that information in yeah, a, in a yeah. easy to understand way. Yeah, because before Splunk, we are not able to get those kind of information easily. Now it's just coming, we just have to create the dashboard. That's that's quite easy to do on Splunk. Right. That really, that helped us. And has anyone uh, ever looked over your shoulder and said, yeah, I want one of those dashboards too. Yeah. It, it seems like that's kind of the way it expands, right? We had a, someone on earlier that said, you know, they developed some dashboards, gave them, gave them to some of the associates and then they kind of did a save as, created their own and locked the guy out of their dashboard. Exactly, people will always come to us and ask us, hey, you have this one, which is great, but I want another one which may be a little bit a small difference is not really the same, the same fields of, of activity and that kind of thing. So right. we're working on it. Okay, so so you're from Geneva, right? We always think of Geneva. It's it's neutral. It's it's kind of where all the governing heads are, and and uh, what you know, laws and banks and all kinds of stuff happens in Switzerland. What if you could give your perspective of kind of some of the, the big technology trends from from where you sit, especially cloud, because you know cloud introduces all kinds of potential interesting concepts, the big one being, where's there? You know, where is the data? Uh, because kind of by default, the clouds, they replicate, it's, it's everywhere, and then it's there. So, how are you seeing cloud adoption in, in, uh, in Switzerland? Are, you, is, are people comfortable with it? Is the security a big issue? Um, where, where do you think Switzerland is relative to, say, the U.S.? I can't speak for everybody, of course, but I do think that security is something that is really important for Switzerland and most of the company over there needs to keep, to keep their data in Switzerland. So maybe they will move to a cloud, but it can be either a private one or something in Switzerland. Okay, and did you watch the security keynote yesterday? Yeah. What did you think? Uh, it's, it's great. We really have some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> he scared everybody. He did scare yeah. the whole conference, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, everyone kind of took a, took a moment and took a step back, but uh, so, Marie-Helene, when we're here next year, 2015, what, what do you, what do you hope to see here from Splunk, things that you would like to see them work on over the next 12 months, um, or things you might be doing over the next 12 months that you think um, you maybe join us on theCUBE again next year and talk about? <laughs> we'll see. To the extent you can talk about them, sometimes future plans, you know, you got to keep them under wraps a little bit, but kind of what's your roadmap look like? For the next future of Splunk, I don't know. I'm really waiting for the 6.2 with the prediction, that kind of thing. We are really looking forward to it. But um, for ISO, I think we'll be working to get some, really those business metrics to know our customer better, mm -hmm. to know how they are behaving and what they want, what they need, to, to get closer to them. That will be important for us. Mm -hmm. Well, Marie Helen, thanks for coming on and sharing your perspective. Thank you. you know, you're just getting started on your journey and it, it, it's <laughs> great to hear. We've, we've had people on from kind of all stages of the journey, people that have been here since the beginning, people that are, that are just getting started like you, so I appreciate your, you coming on and sharing your perspective. Uh, Jeff Frick here again on theCUBE at Splunk.conf 2014. We go wall to wall, we're coming towards the end of day two. We've been having great guests, ton of customers, a lot of practitioners. Here with Jeff Kelly, we'll be back with our next guest after this very short break.